guys, what's up? How are you doing today? Welcome back to this YouTube channel and it's your guy Igor here coming to you uh, with a winter video guys. Tips and tricks how to survive winter in Canada and yes, don't do like this because it's freaking cold but it feels nice, it feels awesome like childhood. <laughs> Right, let's get started. Now, <laughs> don't try that at home, ladies and gentlemen. So what do you need to survive winter in Canada? Well, I'm a perfect example here, staying in front of you. You have to wear many layers. That's my lens cover. So, yeah, this is how I'm dressed up. And I'm dressed up like this on purpose, because I have many layers. Like this, I'm sitting in the office with my shirt. If it's getting colder, I got another layer. A sweater with the fleece inside so it's really warm I know I'm not a stylist but I can get you through the winter so with this sweater I can go out literally without this thing on top of me I can get out of the house at five plus five and up to zero degrees if it's below zero then yes I would rather wear this thing on top now this doesn't have anything to it but it does let the air go through so because I have three layers I'm totally good and of course you would need not only dressing up in like three or four layers you would also need a hat or a toque like this one yellow like a construction pylon on the road traffic stops for me when I'm crossing but I didn't realize it before I bought it on Amazon for 10 bucks if you want some hat like this I'll leave a link below because I don't know this brand first time I found out I'm really cheap guy and this is like 10 bucks and it keeps you warm in winter I really enjoy this brand this is guys how you dress up for winter so many layers remember this and please don't laugh at me when I tell you that there were times in Canada when I was wearing three pair of socks I used to do some like door-to-door -door sales in Ontario when it was minus 30 so what you do is basically you have your winter shoes you put one sock on, put the second one, the third one, and then you put your shoes on. Because I had to spend 11 hours outside on a street, and I had to knock doors for 11 hours. It was extremely cold, like you, you can get a frostbite. And what is a frostbite for those guys of you who are from tropical countries? It's basically like a burn. So when your skin starts to freeze, and then it's, it goes like a burn. Sometimes if you get a frostbite on your finger, they might chop off half of your hand. So, like, be careful with that. You don't want to mess around with frostbites. It's really dangerous. So, if you think that this snow is beautiful and nice, it is beautiful and nice if you're dressed properly. But you can get so much into so much trouble if you neglect to dress up. I've seen people coming from India who didn't know what snow is. So I was laughing at that girl, she was in Centennial College, it was started to snow like that. And the lady was still wearing the flip-flops and like three or four layers of socks. Like, no, you don't wear flip-flops in this kind of weather, you have to get shoes. And she did get shoes later on, but first few weeks in college she was definitely not prepared for it, because your socks get wet, your feet get cold, you have to have proper attire. So, first thing, many layers winter hat get some gloves I know I don't have any on me get some gloves get some of those gloves that you can use on touch screen because if you're wearing a glove and you're like on a train station whatever you're trying to click on your phone it's not going to work if you just you know click with your cloth you have to take off and sometimes it gets so cold you cannot have your hands outside so get gloves with the touch screen so you can you know you can play around with your phone when it's cold some of you might want to get some better hats, better attire. So the main thing is you would have to be prepared for different kind of conditions. If you're in Calgary like myself, basically means that, you know, one day in the morning it's extremely cold, then it's warm by midday, and then it might be cold again by evening. So if you're going somewhere in the morning, it can be really cold. So you put many layers. When it gets warmer, you can just do what I do. You know, you just keep this inside, Take this thing off, and now you're okay, right? You just take it, put it on your hand, and you should be fine. It gets warmer, you take down this part, and that's it. It gets cold, you put it, you put it back on. So the problem is, if you're not prepared for winter, you don't know how to dress up properly, you might get yourself a really nice winter jacket, 
some kind of Canada goose for $700 and it's a good jacket now if you wear a t-shirt under it and it gets hot you cannot wear the jacket too much anymore so you don't have enough layers make sure you have enough layers don't overdress and do not underdress if you overdress you wear too much of warm cloth you start sweating the sweat gets through your cloth and you get cold again you get cold you get sick and that sucks to be sick Thermals is like something that goes under your pant like another layer of pant slim one creates another layer so it creates that it's very good it keeps you warm consider getting yourself some thermal thermals in Canada when you're here you know like there is one that goes under your sweater under your shirt there is one that goes under your pant I used to do some door-to-door -door sales in Ontario when it was minus 30 so what did I wear oh my god guys it was so cold I was like a snowman and 11 hours outside which meant I had to wear winter boots I had to wear three layers of socks inside the winter boots I had to wear two thermals and jeans over it to get through that weather it was insane insanely cold and I had to wear winter gloves no that job sucked I did it only for like two weeks and I decided no I don't want to be a salesman screw it because I'll leave the topic for another video if you want to find out more about the door-to-door -door job that I did make sure you shoot a comment below guys okay let me show you another thing that you have to have for winter also, in Canada. I would suggest you get in an all-wheel drive car like mine for example it's a Subaru it's an all-wheel drive car a bunch of all-wheel drive cars like Toyota and Honda and all sorts of brands I would suggest getting an all-wheel drive car in Canada especially if you're in Alberta and of course I'm suggesting look at this this thing is a winter tire like for those of you who are like what is a winter tire? It has a special pattern. You see how nice it is? It's a Michelin tire. Nice brand too. Brand new tires I got here. And how it works. Why do you need the winter tires here? Well, because tires, they freeze. Rubber becomes solid like a brick. If it's a summer tire, it's just going to get frozen and then you got no traction so it's really easy to lose grip on the road get into a collusion and winter tires they with the temperature the formula of how they make they're more soft even when it's very cold and you get a better grip on ice and slickery road conditions so make sure you got winter tires even if you cannot buy an all-wheel drive car winter tire is just a must-have you can get all season tires they are not as good not as safe never try to drive in winter and summer tires I did that in Ukraine and I almost got myself killed once. <laughs> I would also recommend getting the studded winter tires like the metal spikes outside. They are really good. And of course, just to show you, this is my Subaru and it's a symmetrical all-wheel drive system. It's really good, awesome on ice. One more thing guys, if you're coming to Canada and you are like planning to buy a car, get yourself a car start starter, you know? the dual one that has a communication with the car see you press like that you wait car starts and then this makes a beep sound responding that the car has started get one of this because in winter it really sucks you have to warm up your car so it has to run for at least like five minutes some cars the manufacturers say you don't have to but i would suggest you do because when it's really cold like minus 20 then it's actually getting really cold right now the engine freezes and you know like the oil and everything you you know it, it just it's bad for the engine so warm up your car of course some people are going to say it's super you don't have to warm up this car but i'll tell you this guys your butt is going to freeze if you don't because guess what i have my heater on cranked up and maximum here and one more thing you see what this is this is basically that remote here my heated seat so this has heaters inside and it basically heats up my seat when i sit on it because the seat get really cold the steering wheel gets really cold it's like it's almost impossible to drive the car this one see i didn't keep it on maximum 
but I shoot the, the heater. So you literally need a lot of things to be ready for winter. You would also need one of these things. Alright? Winter brush. Got this from Costco for like close to nothing. I think it was $12. What it is is your car gets covered in snow. So you would be doing something like this to remove snow from your car every single morning. It's extremely cold and you're doing that. Also, this part is made to remove ice because your windshield will freeze and you would have to spend the entire morning, well, probably maybe 10 or 15 minutes of your morning when it's cold, scrubbing off the ice removing the snow and then this brush I love it because it has this part on it you can literally remove you know you can literally remove the water as well with this brush that's why I got it also <laughs> you think it's over you're coming to this country and if you're not prepared you have to be prepared water for your windshield I'm not advertising this brand but what matters is minus 40 now guess what what happens if you are not familiar yet you need something to wash your windshield right some water now if you put the water and gets minus 20 it freezes and then you are out of luck because you cannot use your wipers and even if you put this water that doesn't freeze like alcohol whatever it is it's not going to go through because the water is going to be frozen here the only way to get past this situation you have to keep your car in the garage warm it up wait until it melts empty the water and then you can put the liquid so if you're here you'll see a lot of these things sold in winter and you're going to need it because you need to use your windshield wipers and they are not going to work without this water and of course, I'm gonna give you another trick. Like, I, sh I should charge money for these tricks. It's gonna save you a lot. Look at this. Just keep this up, like this. Because this rubber here, it gets broken, all right? When the water melts, it freezes on top of this rubber. And then you use your windshield wipers and just tears off that rubber. And you have to get yourself a new rubber plate for for, for your car same thing on the back so when you park in winter in Canada lift all of these things off keep them like that and you should be you should be totally fine like that then when you're back clean off your windshields <laughs> guys I'm just sharing with you a lot of things your legs when you get into your car you will have so much of water inside your car now because of the snow traveling on your feet before you get inside okay and only then you get in your car because you're going to have a lake of water on your carpet I don't want to show my carpet because it's messed up right now already it's winter it's never clean and then when it's minus 20 it freezes so you have ice inside your car and if you sit in your car and you start to sleep in winter like you know when there's ice outside on the street and you sit in your car and there is another hockey field inside on your carpet that's when you are you start to understand that this is screwed up and you have to do something about it but you cannot do much you would have to take off your carpet and you would have to take that ice out but what if it leaks under the carpet and starts to freeze up your car well it's not a nice situation plus added the gravel that they add to the roads because the gravel like these pieces mixed with salt all of this they put it on roads to increase the traction of the car on ice the trucks are dri driving around this stuff lies in your windshield you might get your windshield broken with that gravel because they put it on ice so your car doesn't slip and of course guys all of this travels with you inside your vehicle
Okay guys, it's night. I had to stop shooting the video and had some important stuff to do, but now it's too late. It's middle of the night, so I had to take out my flashlight and camera because I still wanted to show you a couple of things. And it's good that it's night because I can actually show you some something that you need. Also, because sometimes if you're driving your car and all of a sudden you break down in winter, you need these ones. I hope every one of you knows what this is because in the winter, in case you leave your lights on on your car like these ones, in case you leave them on or some light inside chances are the battery is going to die and if you're at work and you cannot start your car then it freaking sucks and you would need one of this it usually costs like 20 bucks let me show you. Okay guys, so what this is, this is... No, let's get into my car. This is you connect to your battery, to plus, and to a minus of one car, and you connect the other side to another car to boost your battery so you can start your vehicle. Right guys, I would also like to show you something from Nito's car that in fact I got that for her and it's something that not many people here in Canada has it but definitely helps out a lot in case you get stuck somewhere and this is basically it you know what why does she need so many I'll just go ahead and steal three of them keep them in my car in case you have a breakdown, in case for whatever reason anything happens in the winter with you, this way, car, I just want to make sure it's closed. You can set up these pylons like this, far away from your car, and then there will be a less chance of someone running into you if you by any chance happen to break down and run into somebody else all right guys thank you so much for watching this video surviving winter in Canada and the tips I also want to show you the last tip why it's important to have winter tires now you see over here you can see it let me try to put some more light like this you see it's, it's all right here but on this side it starts to be icy so this is you see right now you can see but if there is no snow it's still slippery and this is what happens if you are wearing summer shoes in winter and that thing that looks like an asphalt here they call it black ice so what it means is it's ice that you don't see so you can be driving your car and then all of a sudden you hit the brakes and guess what happens? <laughs> the car doesn't stop and it just keeps on skidding wherever it wants to go. So be safe on the roads. If the winter starts when you're in Canada, make sure you slow down and drive at least a half speed of a speed limit. Do not rush, be careful. And at least for the first three days, don't do any stunts or anything once you're used to driving in winter i suggest i know that's probably not the best suggestion go to a parking lot empty parking lot where there is no one and try to go in a decent speed speed and then hit brakes to see how your car stops what's the distance for you to stop the car and see if it slides how it slides Getting that feeling in winter can save your life. It did save my car at least two times. Because of me doing that in Ukraine, every time when winter starts, I'm going to one of the abandoned parking lots and making my car. I'm not been doing any donuts or stunts, but just getting the feeling of how it behaves when you lose control, that's how it saved my life when I was com coming to Canada and all of a sudden in the middle of the street I was driving my car in Ukraine 
I lost control. And the next moment I see is the driver's face who was driving behind because my car, in, in a matter of second, it flipped the other way around. It just went like that. And because of me, you know, practicing that, I was able to hold my car in one lane. I didn't hit any cars in my lane and I didn't let the car slide into incoming traffic. And believe me, it would be a huge <laughs> collusion if, if I was not able to handle the car who was in control. Stay safe, guys, stay warm, and we'll see you all in Canada. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll we'll see you next video. Smash the like button if you think this was helpful. Subscribe to this channel if you want to see more. I keep on repeating this on every video, guys. See you, have a good one.